Okay, this program I'm using right now is called Maya 2010. This is the most current version of Maya. You can find the uh, application on Autodesk's website. You can go to Autodesk under Products. You can find it under Autodesk Maya. And this program here is the main application used for most films you see uh, in the theaters. Um, movies like Avatar and whatnot were all done creating uh, using this program, as you can see right here. <coughs> Uh, several game companies also use this tool. Uh, either they use this or 3D Studio Max. Um, I'll be going over 3D Studio Max and another set of tutorials. Uh, you can also actually get a demo version of this if you click on the free trial. It should be a 30 day free trial. You can test it out and see how it's like. Uh, this works for um, Mac OS, Linux, Windows version, XP, 2000, I think 2000 still supported, uh, Vista, and Windows 7. Yeah, all of this should work, so give it a try. It's great. So, the thing that you most of you have to get used to is thinking in 3D space. So, for all of you 2D artists, you're probably typically used to working with uh, X and Y axis, just up and down. Something similar to this. But when you're working in 3D space, you have a Z axis you have to be concerned about. The depth, how far something goes back. Alright. So, let's break it down for uh, kind of... Uh, simple terminology you'll be using in 3D software. Uh, this window here in the middle is considered a viewport. Every 3D application has something like this. It's basically where you do the bulk of your modeling and everything inside. It's where you get to preview your scene before you actually render something. Alright, so in order to navigate like what I'm doing right now, I'm inside the viewport. I make sure I can, I'm just hovering right over it, pulling the alt button down and using my left mouse button I can rotate you can see when I'm pressing the left mouse button, it already changes to a rotate icon, so you can tell if you're rotating or not. <clears throat> Using the alt and middle mouse button will allow you to pan, and alt and right mouse button will let you zoom in and out. Uh, scrolling will also let you go in and out. So basically when you're working with 3D application, um, it is highly recommended you use a 3 button mouse. If you don't have a 3 button mouse, it'll be nearly impossible to navigate. All right. <clears throat> so, in Maya, they have all of these. These are the tab toolbars. Each of them uh, kind of tell you what they're supposed to be meant for. Polygons means you can work with polygons. These are surfaces. NURBS, essentially. Curves are just thin splines. General toolbar, basic stuff you might use, like camera movements and so forth. And there's many more. You can test them all out, see how it's like. Um, some of them you might not see, like uh, I have a Real Flow plugin and a Shave and Haircut plugin. That's why. You can see it on my video. If you don't see it on yours, it's okay. Um, MJ Poly Tools is a plugin I also have on it, and Comet Tools is another plugin I use. So if you don't see these, it's quite normal. Um, up in here, um, you can see the current module is set to animation. That means most of the stuff I'm doing here will be related to animation. Alright, sorry. Uh, let's see. So, in animation, you mainly do your animations in rigs. So when you're in this mode, that's essentially all you do. All of these menus up here will change according to what mode you're in. So if I change this to polygons, this is my modeling set, you'll see all of these menus have just changed. There's other surfaces, dynamics, rendering, and dynamics, etc, etc, etc. For the bulk of this tutorial, I'll be using polygons. Mainly because when I'm modeling, I prefer modeling in polygons. Some people use surfaces, aka NURBS. Uh, NURBS it stands for Non-Uniform Rational B-Splines. Um, essentially, think of them as 3D vectors. It's pretty cool. Alright, polygons. If I click on this, for example, here we go. You have a polygonal sphere. You can see, if I get really close, you can see the facets. That is what a polygon is. The more polygons you have, the more dense it is, the more smooth it gets. Um, every game uses polygons for modeling. Most films do too. Some films use NURBS, some films use SUBD. Um, I'm po primarily a, poly a polygonal modeler, so I don't really know too much of the tools when it comes to surfaces and SUBD. I mean, there's certain things I use surfaces for, like lofting, creating a pipe or something, it's a bit easier. Um, I never really touch SUBDs. I hear it's supposed to be really good, but uh, I remember back then it was a bit slow for me to use. So. Alright, 
there are different types of creations. Uh, some of you who have used the older versions of Maya might be used to clicking on one of these tools and automatically the object will pop up. Ever since Autodesk purchased Maya, uh, that has changed and they've changed it so the default creation is very similar to Max where you have to click and drag. Uh, I personally am not a fan of this method. Um, like this for example. I just don't like how it works. I find it kind of annoying. I like it when I click on the object it automatically appears in the center. So, to change that under your create menu, under both NURBS primitives and polygon primitives, just turn off interactive creation. There. And now when I click on an object, it'll automatically appear in the center with everything zeroed out. Alright. So, a lot of people have this strange notion and belief that the computer does everything for you. I had a relative who actually thought you had a 3D, all you needed to do to do a 3D model was to simply draw a picture, scan it in, and poof, a 3D object appeared. Sadly, it's not that easy. In fact, uh, most things start from a single cube, sphere, plane, or etc., and they cut everything up until it looks like the object you want. Uh, for example, if I just did you know, scale this in, for example, pull this up. I would actually have to make all these little things just to make a monitor-like object. And the computer doesn't know anything. It can't tell that you want to create this. And there's no way that a drawing could just tell it what it needs to do because it has no depth information. So, yeah, every single thing that you see in 3D, everyone models by hand. So, knowing how an object looks like on all angles is very important. Anyways, that just gives you a general idea of what people have to do sometimes when they make an object. Alright, I recommend getting very used to navigation simply because if you can't navigate, it's kind of impossible to work with everything. Over here you'll see different type of manipulator uh, icons also. The shortcuts for these are essentially Q, W, E, and R. So, if I were to click on this box here, if I press Q, this means select. I just can select objects. So if I had several of these objects, just Q just allows me to just select the object and not really change anything about them. W lets me move, aka known as translate. See when I move this around, these values change, so I can type in specific values, and that way when I want to move it somewhere, I can move it exactly where I want it to go. E if I uh, tap on this and I switch to E, it's rotate. Rotate by clicking on any of these. Uh, you can also click on this blue one and rotate based on the on the view. It's pretty interesting. And then R is scale. So you can scale in, out, in, out. Smack in the center, so you can scale on all of them. If you hold control and grab this little part, then it'll constrain the height while scaling the other sides and vice versa. Give all these a try and see how they're like. Yeah, it's pretty useful, pretty neat. So, other things that are important. Um, let me create a plane. This will be a great way to uh, show an example of how all this stuff works. Let's take, for example, you want to move all of these, but currently just knowing how to select an object and kind of doing that, and moving it around, doesn't really alter the shape of this. This right now, when it's still green, is considered object mode. I can switch over to sub-object modes where I can control each of these lines, these flat tiles, aka faces, or the intersections which are known as uh, vertices. So when I press F9, you'll see the intersections all have a little dot. That's a vertex. When I click on these, the W, Q, W, E, and R tool, um, buttons still work the same, so I press